there's an invisible line in every chemical plant. And if you have no idea of what I'm talking about, stay tuned because you're most likely missing on the fundamentals of plant design, budgeting, and process operation. I'm talking about battery limits. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. It's always great to have you back. And in this video, we're going to be talking about battery limits, inside battery limits and outside battery limits. All this, hopefully, in less than 10 minutes. So, if you're a chemical engineer or someone interested in chemical processes, ensure to subscribe. Now, let us define battery limits. So, the easiest one to define will be the inside battery limits. And as the name implies, it is going to be something which is inside a region or the lines of the chemical plant. Now, it's very important to understand that physically we can have something within or inside the battery limit of the inside or outside. But what we're talking about is responsibilities, processes, and lines. Inside battery limits. Think of these as the fundamentals, unit, operations, processes, or equipment of your chemical plant. And we're talking about maybe reactors, distillation columns, tanks, and of course the pipes, valves that are within the battery limit. And a quick guide to understand whether or not this is part of the inside battery limit of the process is whether or not it is in the piping and instrumentation diagram. This is a quick rule of thumb, but of course, always important to ensure which parts are inside or outside the battery limits of your process. Now, let's see a quick example. As you can see here, we have a reactor, we have heat exchangers, compressors, process piping, even instrumentation and other core units. What you don't see are utility systems, flare systems, storage tanks, or many other concepts which are relevant for the operation of the chemical plant, but not quite for the process engineer in charge of this process. And here relies the importance of understanding inside and outside battery limits. Not only because it's quite relevant for the design and the execution, but also whenever we're talking about responsibilities, it's quite important to understand which type of units are inside your design and which others are not. Outside battery limits, OSPL. And as stated before, are all the things that are used to serve a purpose that are not core fundamental of the process. And a quick thumb rule could be thinking of this as utilities, all the pipelines, offsites, and infrastructure. Quick examples are roads, flare systems, cooling towers, the steam generation, the electrical substations, some control rooms, maybe even warehouses, tank farms, pipe racks, some administration buildings, and much more. And I know that many of these are not so sexy as distillation or the reactor, cracker or such, but are quite important because they are serving our process. And why is it important to understand the differences and limits of the inside and outside battery limits? Number one will be cost control. It's quite important to be able to separate what are the parts fundamentals of the core system, let it be raw materials, the reactor operation, if there's heating, if there's any cooling, if we're talking about flash systems, or any safety or hazard issue. In the other hand, OSBL, it's quite important as well to maintain cost because many times there are lots of hidden costs which are not shown in the main design. And I'm talking about long pipe runs, oversized cooling systems, inefficient heatings, and much more. Number two will be modular design. As the name implies, these are designs based on models. We may be talking about where we are going to be mounting certain type of unit, in which floor, and so on. All this pretty straightforward for the inside battery limit for the process engineer. And number three, project facing, guys. It's very common to stage projects in two main phases. The inside battery phase, which will be the core fundamental, all the unit operations, all relevant to the production of the chemical. And phase number two, which will be the OSPL, which implies that we are going to either take advantage of the existing OSPL infrastructure or simply creating a new OSPL from scratch. Whatever the case it may be, it's important that both engineers and project managers take into consideration the inside and outside battery limits into the real physical 
concept of the chemical plant. And I'm pretty sure that some questions may have arise between the differences on inside battery limits and outside battery limits. So let me address some common example of mistakes. Mistake number one, underestimating the requirements for the OSPL. So it's very common that the engineering mind focuses on the big unit. Let it be distillation column, making simulations, trying to optimize the number of plates, and sizing the compressor and all this, paying attention to the distillate final composition. And eventually you realize that you don't have enough temperature for the cooling water system, or simply you don't have a flare axis in the layout. Mistake number two will be more towards the design and it is not defining the actual limit in time or early on in the design. This is quite common. All engineers are focusing their attention into the actual design. They're trying to split responsibilities. Who is going to be doing what? The piping engineer, the heat engineer, the process engineer, then you have the mechanical, the environmental. Everyone is working great, but eventually, because the limit is not set, you're going to see that everyone is doing what they want. And this is very common whenever you don't have a defined scope. You're going to encounter a lot of blurry responsibilities, increase in cost and other problems. And finally, guys, mistake number three, the poor integration between the inside and outside battery limits. This is by far one of the most common mistakes because now that we have defined the actual line, everyone is going to see for their benefits. Of course, the one in charge of the inside battery limits is going to be doing everything in their task within the inside battery limits. And the people in charge of outside battery limits are going to be focusing their attention into their main projects and processes. And eventually what you see is that the actual connection between the two of them is not as direct or simple as stated. A good example could be as simple as having a pump with no electrical power because the SBL wasn't ready or maybe a problem from the inside battery limits, designing the unit operation with the specifications that are not actually existing in the OSPL. Let it be cooling water temperature, steam pressure, and such. Talking of which, I remember back in my days that we had some issues because the inside battery limit required for us to install a DCS. Well, our surprise was that because the vendor was working for the OSPL team, they didn't actually got all the electrical cables installed. So we had some issues. The matching was there, but the problem was that we couldn't actually make it work because there was no connection and we had to talk to the vendor, the vendor had to con, and it was actually not fault of the vendor because the OSBL team just simply required the unit to be installed, not fully operational for the actual chemical process. So that was a quick overview on the inside and outside battery limits. I'm pretty sure that you may have heard them, especially if you're already working on site. And the main idea was to try to understand the main differences between each of them and some practical cases or mistakes that I've seen out in the industry. But thankfully, now you understand what's inside battery limits, outside battery limits, and more importantly, why we must define the boundaries since the conception of the design, why the process engineer needs to go with the OSBL team and understand the utilities, the connections, and any issues that may arise in the future, and more importantly, understanding that the inside battery limit team needs to be always coordinating with the outside battery limit. Because as stated, this may be a invisible line, but oh dear, it's quite important to ensure that the line is properly set. Now guys, if you have had any kind of experience on the ESBL side or the OSBL side, please let us know in the comment section what was the main issue and how you solve it. I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of people out there that have had their experiences with the battery limits. And if you made it to the end, I'm pretty sure that you are interested in chemical and process engineering. So ensure to like and subscribe. On my behalf, guys, that will be it. I'll see you in the next video. Love is clean and love is pure. And love is a thing that no doctor can cure.